GM's produced many generations of Impala, from economy to super sport. It's been the charge of many minds in Detroit. But rebuilding it to knockout show status in Classic Industries' first rendering required the creativity of builders of varying generations, from apprentice to legendary status. When you haven't got a manual to help with your assembly, a sample is the next best thing. Good to see you again. Hey, you too, Dan. How are you? Right on. When Dan came in this morning, we were working on the, on the package for you. What, what I need you to do for me while I'm getting this board ready is I need this edge of this front, this rounded off. Just okay. take the sharp edge off. What do we actually have to do on the package for you this morning was to uh, actually cut the holes. We're going to put the matching vinyl on this. This material is um, the matching original vinyl to the seat, so we're going to put this over top of it. Put the foam on put the material on, figure out what we're gonna use for a speaker grill, uh, the effect that we wanted. We had to uh, use uh, actually two speaker grills to get the effect that we kind of wanted. It came out great. Wanda's worked a sewing machine on some of the area's top award getters, but it's not just a one-man band. He has some veteran help, too. The famous Ray. How are you? All right, how are you doing, Dan? <laughs> Good, I read your book, you know, How to Spit Hog Ring. The most challenging part on it was the headliner. The main thing you have to do on that is make sure you get all your wrinkles out. That is now nice. finishing up the headliner, putting the trim and all on it. Nice. These guys work in tandem. Ray handles installation, Wanda fabrication, but it's not a fixed line of responsibility. Uh, do you need any of my help to install this? Because I'm yeah. an expert at this now. Okay, <laughs> that's your job. Now. Okay. Uh, we installed hush mat in this particular car for us. Sound deadening. It, it works real well for us if we just uh, lay, lay, peel the back off, lay it down, roll it on, and it stays put. You know, deaden all the sound so you don't get rattles and, and vibration. In the, in the trunk area of this car, it has a, a, a t spare tire well. And we mounted all the amplifiers uh, for the stereo system all in that tire well. And in turn, we have to make a cover that go over top of that. So we have to actually put our, our carpet down and we'll run our carpet over into the wheel well and make a cover that will mount on top of that and so you, you, you'll be able to see the, uh, the amplifiers through it and we'll build a back wall in the trunk and also we'll have uh, walls down both sides to match up with the uh, boom box system. A trunk this big doesn't require carpet. It gets broad loop. On the boom boxes uh, for this car, Tune Time built them, they built them identical. They didn't have the car to build a second one. And the right side of the car was a little higher from the floor to the top of the fender well, so we had to actually shim the boom box up to get it up to the top of the, the fender well. For some unexplained reason, the right rear quarter has been giving us fits. It's not quite a perfect match to the left side. Then again, it could be the right side is perfect and the left is wrong. Either way, something has to be tweaked. The trunk's especially interesting to me because uh, we're putting in a, a major high-end stereo and Wanda's doing all the custom interior in the trunk, uh, customizing it with uh, carpeting, upholstery, uh, just making it look really fancy. In the trunk, uh, we'll, you'll be able to see the um, uh, amplifiers. We're, we're going to put a cover over it, and we'll put plexiglass on the cover. And you'll be able to see the amplifiers, and you'll be able to see the uh, boom box. And we're going to close the back wall of it in. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to help right. Okay. So what do you want? You need to shorten these, right? Mm -hmm. You made a mark? Right. Right here. Right here. there? The aftermarket, you always have to do a little cutting or something. Don't ever think you're going to get an aftermarket to fit right in. Almost anyone who has built a car knows aftermarket requires finesse. That rule is true. Experience teaches it. Expert skills solve it. My whole life, I wanted people to call me the hammer. On the door panel, they put electric windows in it. So you have to know exactly where you want to put the electric switches, or otherwise, when you put the panel on, you're going to hit the inside and it won't fit. Well, uh, when they went to install the rear seat, uh, they had the seat in too high. Uh, when you're installing the seats in these older cars like that, you have to start from the bottom and push upward. The top of the seats are always a little narrow than the bottom of the seats, so you have to go in from the bottom area and push forward. I was very happy to see the interior come together today because uh, we went through quite a bit of a few changes because the vehicle parts came from two or three different vehicles and so some of the stuff didn't fit exact. They may not be an exact fit but pros like Ray and Wanda resolve problems like that every day.
The, the bucket seats for this car, they had the wrong tracks for it. A few things happened. We changed the springs on the seats, and uh, we finally got everything kind of in line and got it pretty much squared away, and uh, they worked out real well, so they look real good in the car. The upholstery in the passenger cabin isn't 100%, but it's close. The thing that's really going to eat up time is custom work, and that all happens here.